Hello. In this video, we are going to practice our value. Value is one of the elements of art. We're going to need a pencil, a ruler, and at least two colored pencils, although I'm using three today. This is going to be a fun project. And, um, excuse me, Mr. Duck? Phil, can, can I have some space, please? Thanks. Anyway, we're going to be making a wonderful drawing here with some stripes. Uh, I'm going to show you how to trace your hand. Basically, you want to make sure that your hand is right in the center of your paper. You don't want to put it too low down. You want your wrist to show as well. So when you start tracing, hold your pencil straight up and down. And you're going to make sure that as you're tracing, you don't dip in under your fingers because that will kind of mess up your tracing. And remember everybody, if you need to, you can always pause the video if I get ahead of you. That's the great thing about these online videos. There, now that I've traced my hand, it's on to the ruler. We're going to use our ruler to draw straight lines across our paper, but you can choose to make it either diagonal or horizontal or vertical. It's up to you how you trace your lines. I'm going to go at a slight slant because it adds a little bit more energy to the picture. What you'll want to do is make sure that you trace straight lines as evenly as you can across your paper, except where your hand print is. So wherever you trace the line for your hand, you want to stop drawing and kind of go in between your fingers to the other side. We don't want to draw a straight line across of our, our hand. After you're done drawing your straight lines across the background, we'll go back in and make some curvy lines to create a 3D effect. Okay, so now we are going to start where the line stopped and we're going to make some arches. Arches are nothing but curved lines. We want to make it look like our hand is actually embedded in this paper. So you're going to make the line curve up and around your finger. Every time you see a line stop and start, all you have to do is make a curvy line to connect. Now, I'm going to fast forward the video so you don't have to sit here for all that time watching me draw some little curves. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need to so that you can keep up. Okay, so with your colored pencils, what you want to do is decide which color pattern you want. I'm using three colored pencils, so I decided that I wanted a complementary color of blue and orange, and I added a green in just for a little bit of extra interest. What I did was trace over the pencil line with my colored pencil so it stood out a little bit more. It also helps me stay inside the lines when I'm coloring. When you're coloring the spaces around your fingers and your hand, I want you to color with a medium pressure on your pencil. It shouldn't be really dark and it shouldn't be really light. And you want to make sure that the colors as even as possible. When it comes to adding value for our hand, you want to think about a light source. What's a light source? Well, imagine the sun. The sun is a light source and it creates shadows. So here I am shading in a darker area with a higher intensity of my green colored pencil. What that is doing is it is creating a shadowed side and a lighter side, or we call a highlighted side. So we have shades and highlights.
you'll want to continue doing this all the way down your piece of paper. Now, I know this may seem a little tedious, but wow, it, it really creates a really amazing picture when you're all done. So remember, you always wanna keep your shadows on one side and your highlights on the other side. I mentioned the word intensity earlier. Basically, intensity is just the measure of how bright a color is. If you have bright intensity, that means that I'm pushing down harder with a pencil. So the bright blues and the oranges and greens is more intense than the lighter shades that I'm coloring with. If you take your time with your shading and adding value, you're going to add value to your picture. If you try to rush through it, it's not going to look as good as you're hoping for. This picture took me roughly an hour to do, so don't worry about trying to get it all done in one sitting. Come back to it after a while. Take a break. By the end of this little session, my hand was a little tired. I had to take a break for, for a few minutes here and there. As you're making your picture, keep in mind that mistakes can happen, right? It's okay. We're just here to practice and have fun. This isn't anything really serious. We're trying to get better at art. If I can teach you a little bit about value, great. Just try your best. As you move your way down your piece of artwork, you're going to find that some of the stripes on the wrist are not going to uh, connect to the background stripes because they have kind of gone off the paper, right? Well, you have to continue your pattern down your wrist anyway. Otherwise, you'll have some empty spaces you're not sure what to do with. There. Our picture is all done. I really like the way it turned out. I hope you really like the way yours turned out. I'd love to see your art. How did you use value in shading your picture? Did you find that it was easier to show value when you added more intense color? Did you find that pushing down with your color pencil made your hand tired like mine? Wow. This picture looks like it's come to life. It's amazing what you can do with some colored pencils. I mean, I could put my hand on it. It's like I've pressed down into the paper, into the table or something when I pick it up. It's really cool. And I just realized something. 
I broke my own rule. The first thing we should always do is what? That's right, we need to put our name on our art. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is a great art lesson for anybody from third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, all the way up. Doesn't matter how old you are, art is always fun when we give it a good go. Thanks.